Saturn devouring his son. Good God, how awful. Everything in this painting is disturbing. It's the first time I've seen brushstrokes like this. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service, day and night, sir. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? My good fellow, would you have any amber available? I would, but unfortunately I don't think I am authorized to give it out, sir. I believe it is a precious stone. Look, you aren't going to kick up a fuss about a vulgar piece of resin, are you? Don't believe what they say about amber. It does nothing to warm up infants' bodies, let alone prevent toothache. And neither does this fossil oleo resin stimulate fertility. You can believe me. Thank you for educating me. I didn't know. Here you are, sir. Does sir desire anything else? I still haven't quite recovered after the boat crossing. Would you have any Maltese cross by any chance, please? I... I am sorry, sir, but the Maltese cross may be just a plant, but it is also a powerful psychotropic drug that causes undesirable diuretic effects. I would advise against, sir, taking any. You see, Tribulus cystoides is from the Zygophilaceae family, very rich in nitrates and potassium chloride. It was used in India 700 years before Christ, my good fellow, and I know nothing better to perk you up. Oh, as sir wishes. Here is the herb, sir. May I help you in anything else, sir? You wouldn't have a little golden elixir I could use, would you? Oh, unfortunately, sir, I have orders not to give any of that medicine to any of Lord Mortimer's guests. Some guests are here to follow a very strict treatment. Mixing or combining certain substances would be dangerous for sir. That's fine. I have no intention of swallowing this remedy. You see, I generally use it to put the shine back on my shoes. But maybe you'd rather I ask permission from Lord Mortimer. Where is he? I'd like to tell him about my shoe problem. Sir, need do nothing of the sort. There is no reason to disturb Lord Mortimer with this small matter. As you wish. Here you are, sir. I hope sir will have enough with one bottle, as I haven't any more. Oh, I'll make do. It's good of you to get this much. May I do anything else for sir? A little Carmelite water would do me a lot of good. Could you find me some, please? Oh, the tonics are under lock and key, sir. Lord Mortimer only allows access to them in cases of emergency. What? That's the last straw. Lord Mortimer himself asked me to take the sea to join him here. I accept it out of kindness. The voyage was undertaken in conditions that I prefer not speak about. And then at long last I arrive and, and you refuse me a simple flask of Carmelite water? No, sir. I... I... Your name. Tell me your name. The, uh, uh, here, sir, your Carmelite water. Uh, please accept my sincerest apologies. If sir requires anything else whatsoever, sir has only to ask. What's that book you're hiding in your jacket? The Sorrows of Young Werther, by Goethe, sir. And I am not hiding it. Hand it to me. 
please. It is damaged, sir. I would never dare lend sir a book in such a pitiful state, sir. I took it to restore. Dear friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army, and Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? It is remarkable. Yes, I heard the news. What a storm. Huh. Peru looks totally out of place here. He's counting the tin sets of cutlery around each plate? The man is completely lost. Thank you again for the wine, Your Eminence. It is served every day at the King's table. I am delighted to hear it. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. That's right. Surprising when you know Volner prohibited religious practices in Prussia. Renowned member of the Rose Croix Order, former Freemason, and great lever of alchemy. And look at Piaggi fawning over him. I really do have a problem digesting political protocol. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, I am shaking in my clogs. <laughs> A Prussian Britannic coalition is not good for France. The last time we fought against them, our empire went up in smoke. Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity. Typically French. A Sauterne, isn't it? Absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favorite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry. I appreciate the same great varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, I put some small effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. It's the first time I've ever seen her so moved. Just mention that orphanage broke right through Emily's hard shell. Is everything all right? 
Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. <laughs> My lord, I only know the prestige of your name. Might I have the honor of getting to know you a little better? You are Monsieur... Louis Maurras de Richet. De Richet. De Richet. A name with a nobiliary particle. Are you descended from a noble line? The presence of a particle does not necessarily mean a person belongs to the nobility, nor does it prevent the observance of the rules of etiquette, Monsieur von Vonner. That's right. Have you any information on this Napoleon? He's certainly well connected and in high places. Surprising. No one appears to know him. No one knows me, and yet here I am. Quite uh -oh. so. Monsieur de Richet, it would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? Certainly not. Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 louis d'or for 200 cannon. I've only just taken over the affair. The agreement will be considered null and void until we've gone through it together. Is that clear? All right, you seem to know what you're doing. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? I think what France is lacking today is a truly strong leader ready to govern her. Someone who will restore her luster, who will propel her forward so once again she becomes a proud nation respected by all. A man capable of both rebuilding the country from the inside and, at the same time, developing exterior relations. Someone with a vision, I think. The right person still remains to be found. You're right, my friend. I hear your words and I agree. Monsieur de Richer, I am reassured. I am very happy to have met you. Lord Mortimer was right to put his trust in you. I hope to work with you in the very near future. I would like to thank you for your support by offering you this humble little gift. Hmm. Reflections on the revolution in France. Monsieur Bonaparte, I thank you for this gesture and please know that I too am delighted to have met you. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer and you, Sir Holm, for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. 
The last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all, my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Washington is a very gifted speaker. Leave him for five minutes with sworn enemies and he'll convince them to be friends for life. Right, we shall meet again tomorrow. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. Let's recap. Before dinner, I was going to investigate my mother's message. I've got to find the place where all eyes size you up. is surrounded by a triple circle. crystals. Dining on ham. Well, that's very appetizing.
Discourse on the Method by Descartes. This book changed the way I looked at the world. The only person sizing me up here is that monumental Zeus. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service day and night, sir. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? What's that book you're hiding in your jacket? The Sorrows of Young Werther by Goethe, sir. And I am not hiding it. Hand it to me, please. It is damaged, sir. I would never dare lend Sir a book in such a pitiful state, Sir. I took it to restore. Indeed, this masterpiece must not become more damaged. Let me have it and I'll take care of it personally. I love antiquarian books. It bothers me somewhat. It isn't Sir's job to take care of it, really. No, but I would love to. You'll be doing me a favor by letting me have it. In that case, sir, I shall leave it in your care with pleasure. May I do anything else for, sir? Pages taken from an ancient encyclopedia. The Chronicles of the Amber Princes. As I recall, Dorkin was my favorite character. There's a pattern with five circles on this chest. Cisterce from Roman Gaul. Well, Your Eminence, do you still have any room left? Ah, my son, the sin of gluttony is the most difficult of all in my eyes. Nevertheless, 
What a charming moment we have had together. I'm delighted I was able to talk to Mr. Von Volner. We hadn't spoken to each other for an eternity. Yes. I noticed that your eminence knew a fair number of people at the table. The benefit of age, my son. This isn't my first invitation to Lord Mortimer's. You will see, it's the perfect place to make new friends. Indeed, I noticed that you and Mr. Bonaparte had already begun. Ah, I adapt quickly to local customs. It's what I was taught. <laughs> and you are right to do so, my son. But tell me, have you had any news of your mother since your arrival? <sighs> Alas, still nothing, your minutes. But I still haven't been able to meet Lord Mortimer. Do not worry. It is typical of him. What can I say? Lord Mortimer is a very busy man. I should think you are beginning to worry. Well, I, I must admit, Your Eminence, indeed it does worry me. I understand. But continue to have faith in Sarah. You'll see, I'm sure, that in a few days we'll all be laughing together. That's all I hope for, Your Eminence. But while I have you with me, I, I have a question for you. Well, go ahead, Louis. What can I do for you? As I haven't visited all the manor yet, I wondered if you hadn't seen a Medusa by any chance. I beg your pardon? Yes, La, la Gorgogne, the Medusa from Greek mythology. Would you have seen one in any shape or form? Not at all, my son. I'm not sure what you're getting at, but unfortunately, I, I'm not going to be of any use to you. Thank you anyway, Your Eminence. I won't take up any more of your time. On that last word, then I shall leave you to fight your demons. See you later, Your Eminence. See you later, my son. Expressly forbade me from Honey, it. the remedy of the gods. A few pages out of an old encyclopedia. size you up. Chances are, that's the room my mother spoke of. And she also spoke of a Medusa. She go and try to find the creature now? Byzant from the Byzantine Empire. A meeting between Louis Catours and the Saint Louis. Louis. A fragment of amber. The Fall of Phaeton. Another painting by Rubens. Poor Phaeton, struck by lightning by his crystals. father Apollo, for borrowing his chariot and losing control of it. Moral. Don't steal Dad's cherry. Ah, François Premier. The Song of Roland. Roland feeleth his Christ crucified by Velasquez. 
Look, someone's left a note there. Reserved for the Duke of Alquidia. dining with Louis XIV. The king's posture is surprising. It's almost as if he's addressing someone in the assembly. Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. The last day before his crucifixion, Jesus announces that he will be betrayed by one of his disciples. The devil's thorn. I'll keep it. Honey, I couldn't have hoped for better. Painting with no name. I've got to find out what Mother was trying to do with her. The Medusa. A hero armed with... Sword. Hmm, a hero with a lantern, and the last one holding a shield. I'll stake my life on it. All the statues form a single scene together. The poor devils are about to face the beast. Let's give them a helping hand.
For Pete's sake, Emily. You scared the pants off me. Don't ever do that again. Well, keep your nose out of my business, then. I don't know what you're talking about. First my room, now here. Stop following me. You're becoming a nuisance. Wait a minute. Are you... You're not implying that I'm here to court you, are you? Oh, Louie, I'm just stating the obvious. You wouldn't be the first, rest assured. Yeah, this is embarrassing. The worst thing is that it seems to be working. Stop fooling around and tell me what you're doing here. Oh, yeah? So tell me what you're doing here. I'm just... I mean, I... Yeah, just like me. Probably, but I asked the question first. Well, then, we'll pretend you haven't asked me yet. What about a little gallantry, Louie? Come on, I'm listening. What are you doing here? Listen, this isn't one of Madame Scudery's soirees. There's no room for courtesy in a place like this. I promise in any other circumstances, I would try to show a bit more spirit in my efforts to amuse you. For today, I suggest we focus on the rather obvious fact that we are both interested in spying on our host. I congratulate you on your knowledge of fashionable soiree of the 12th century, but you have just ruined the ambiance, Louis. Well, no matter. I'll tolerate your presence this one time. Now, since you're here, make yourself useful. Look around on your side. I'll do the same on mine. And if you find anything of interest, let me know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dreams. At your service, madam. on searching. Hey, Mortimer is the author of this work. He talks about his passion for art. like a pamphlet on different political regimes, written by Mortimer himself. Fragment of amber. Here's something interesting. A manor in Maine. Hundreds of acres of land in Catalonia. Properties in Shanghai. Incredible. Some of these deeds are over 600 years old. And all signed by the hand of Mortimer. I wonder if that's what inspired my mother's attention. How come all these documents have Mortimer's signature on them? Do you think all these properties really belong to him? See those fine scratches around the words? Yes, and? The ink barely spreads on the paper. It spreads exactly the same way on the signature. The deed was written using the same ink. If it is a fake, then it's a professional job.
maybe Mortimer is immortal or capable of living for a very long time like Methuselah. A first smile. Careful. Keep that up and soon you'll end up laughing. Carry on sprouting inanities like that and indeed I might. These documents are intriguing, but do you really think that's what attracted your mother's attention here? And how do you know my mother was interested in this room? I didn't know, I just supposed she was. And you just confirmed it. So, do you think she found what she came for? I don't know. She was obsessed with Mortimer and I must confess these property deeds are troubling. If that's the case, why would she have left them? Once again, I don't know. We'll have to ask her when we find her. And what's your take? Why keep such a collection hidden in a secret room? Any thoughts? Mortimer has every reason in the world to conceal it, even if only to keep it from people like us. Hey, Emily, we're not thieves. We're only looking. I wonder why my mother didn't make it clear what she was interested in here. She didn't have time to write it down, or maybe she wasn't sure of what she was looking for. Or she wanted to protect her discoveries. It's disturbing. You'll just have to search the rest of the room. Maybe you'll find something. Carry on searching. Guess what I found? The Holy Grail. Older than that. A piece of Noah's Ark. Not that old. This could go on for hours. Just tell me. Caesar's laurel wreath. I can just see Mortimer dressed in a toga, wearing a laurel wreath, strutting around his manor all day long. You have a curious idea of Mortimer. Why? He's eccentric, like all the English are, isn't he? Well, if Peru stands for French grace, then if I were you, I wouldn't be making that sort of remark. What is that you found? A cameo pendant. What's going on? Nothing. For crying out loud, Emily, you lunged for that jewel like your life depended on it. Tell me what this is about. No. I can't trust a man who sneaks into my room in the middle of the night. Are you really going to use that against me every time we meet? It's difficult to pretend nothing happened. We just met, Louis. I like you, but I can't just suddenly open myself up like a book to you. Listen, Emily. It seems pretty obvious to me that you haven't come here for the sole purpose of sampling Mortimer's cellar. Stop all the clever evasions and just trust me. And why the hell should I place my trust in you, Louis? When are you going to understand that I just want to help you? What do you expect? That I'll fall into your arms and say yes to everything you want? What are you talking about? I'm only asking you to trust me a little. If only on principle, as a member of the Golden Order, for example. I'll admit, you are fairly reliable. That's it? I was expecting more. Well, I'm prepared to trust you when it comes to choosing a French cheese. But I've nothing to gain by confiding in you any further than that. Nothing to gain? Damn it, Emily! I'm only trying to help you. Stop needing to gain something all the time. Because you think I need help? Just like everyone. You have your strengths and your weaknesses. And there's no use pretending otherwise. Ha! <laughs> And I bet you found out where I'm weak, haven't you? Pragmatic, intelligent, sure of herself. Her only weak spot is her difficulty talking about herself. I don't know much about your past, but I'm guessing you had to get by on your own for much of your life. It might have closed you off, and that can be a disadvantage. It might be time for you to open up and risk a little trust. Not every man you meet wants to hurt you. Hmm. Yes, you may be right. I might have some weaknesses, but I don't need your help to overcome them. 
and I'm simply not contemplating collaborating with anyone at this time. Do you understand? Yes, it's perfectly clear. You're already working with someone. Ah, well spotted, Louis. I already have a work partner. I know my weaknesses. I don't doubt that your abilities will be of use to me. But I already have all that, thanks to my teammate. Is there any chance you might tell me who he is? No, I've already said too much. Consider yourself lucky I've even given you this much. It's extremely rare, believe me. Come on, don't stop now that you've come this far. You know that eventually I'll end up making you talk. Well, since no one can resist you, let's see if you can guess who my partner is. You're a gambler. So, your partner is... Your sister. She's your partner. She's the one you're looking for. Well, I am impressed. How the devil did you guess I had a sister? Virtually no one even knows. When it comes to getting results, you are very good, I grant you that. You deserve to know why the sight of the cameo pendant affected me so strongly. I thought it belonged to Emma, my twin sister. Oh! Now I get why you said you had a memory for two. Yes, you can't imagine to what extent though. As children, everyone got us mixed up. So one day we decided to play along. Since then, we have become one and the same. We have officially erased the identity of my sister Emma. Emily Hillsborough. The woman with two faces. Clever. But isn't it complicated? How do you make it work? One of us has no existence in the outside world. We share everything. First for one, then for the other. We dress the same, wear the same makeup, we speak the same. We've learned to act as one. When we accept a mission, we both turn up. This time, though, she went ahead and I was meant to wait for her on the mainland. She was meant to meet Sir Home and bring back the details so we could work out who would follow up. And there was a problem? She was supposed to return for Mortimer's one week ago. The boat turned up at Plymouth, but alas, no trace of my sister. Instead, a sailor passed me a message from Home, notifying me of her sudden disappearance. So, my mother and your sister go missing just a few days apart. That's strange. Maybe their disappearances are linked. It's clearly a possibility, but up to now I haven't found a trace of either of them. None of this is very reassuring. By the way, Louis, now that you are in on the secret, you are obliged to keep it to yourself. Or you will pay very dearly. Don't worry. Your secret is safe with me. It's time to leave. So, what do you think of our first adventure? I must admit, it has been fun by your side. Same here.
she's been drinking too much again. Louis, I need to talk to you right now. Good evening, Elizabeth. Actually, this is not a good time. I'm begging you, please, don't leave me alone. I'll be waiting for you in your room, but don't be late. I was sure there was a certain je ne sais quoi between us. Louis, we need to talk now, otherwise it'll be too late. Looks like Elizabeth really needs me, but if I start talking to her, for sure Emily won't wait for me. What should I do? Excuse me, Elizabeth, but some very urgent business has cropped up. We can speak tomorrow. No, Louis, don't leave me alone. They've come back. Good night, madam. Well, well, Louis, you took your sweet time. What did our poor Elizabeth want? She probably wanted to chat more about my mother. Really? So Miss Adams is somehow linked to your mother? In a way, I guess she is. But I thought all of that could wait until tomorrow. That young girl seems very... Emily? Have I misunderstood something here? What are you doing in my room? And for a while now, the question has been nagging at me. And that explains why I now find you here, in my bed. Go ahead. Ask me the question that's been burning at your lips. I know your mother was here to meet someone, but I can't figure out who. Oh. So that's what's been hiding behind all this. We are both members of the Order, Louis. Let's try to be honest with each other. I have followed with great interest your affair in Paris. In connection with Mr. Von Borschert, you managed to steal something from him, if I'm not mistaken. Are you talking about the Book of All Mysteries? Al Azif? That's right, Louis. A valuable bit of plunder, isn't it? Yeah. When we finally found it, we took it. And where is the book right now? Amazingly, it's right here. Mother took it with her when she came. This is quite fascinating. But just what did Sarah expect to accomplish here? My mother came here to find out who Von Burchard planned on selling the book to. And did she find out? I have no idea. But I think she thought it would be someone invited to Mortimer's next party. You mean, one of us here now? That's what I think. It wouldn't be you, by any chance. Unfortunately, no. I was planning to steal it myself. Thank you for all this information, Louis. Right. Enough chatting. Come and join me instead. Well, have a good night. Good night. See you tomorrow, rested and ready. Sure thing. Mr. Drichet, at last we meet. 